Hey guys, and welcome to part five of how to paint a Black King. So today we're getting close to the end. Uh, let's take a look. So yeah, he's pretty close. We're going to do, um, this is all like finishing off the secondary details and the base today. Um, so there's little bone uh, skulls there, the, the bone color on that. Um, the cloth, this gray cloth. Uh, these little horns and protrusions on his um, shoulder pad and helmet and um, the straps and so once we've done all that um, we'll be ready to uh, next week to come back in and, and do our um, final touches on the skin you know from way back when, when we first started and, and, and built that skin color up and now we're going to come back in and do the final layers now that we can see the whole model we can see what all the colors look like um, and just finalize that and then come in with all of those the wonderful Nurgle's uh, dribbly bits and uh, give this guy um, the treatment you know put a, a few bits of staining here and there and little dribbles and uh, colors and basically just uh, Nurgleify him up not that he isn't already Nurgleified but we, we want Nurgle can always have more you know he always likes a little more so that'll that'll complete him and we should have something really cool by the end so um, yeah, let's get started and have a look. So today we've got a few less colors than last week. Um, so we're going to be using the uh, this uh, Doom Ball here and the Bella Brown and a bit of black. Um, and that'll be used for the straps, um, like when we, we put the, the base color on. Um, all of the bone will be using this um, field drab we've been using throughout this series. Um, a little bit of the Oshapti bone and some white uh, for that. And then we've got this uh, gray color we've been using in the skin on various areas around the model. Um, we're going to use that again um, for the for the, clo the cloth and the clothing there. And then at the back here I've got my um, my washes again. So we've got the magenta, the purple, uh, the yellow and the blue. And we'll be using those again just finally um, to add a little bit of color into, into these uh, skulls and maybe around the base of some of these horns um, and, and into the cloth just to make sure everything has those colors um, across the board, you know, so we get that nice unified look. Um, and, and it's always fun to do it. It just looks really cool, you know, little stains in, in, in the, you know, in the eye sockets of those skulls and things like that um, looks really good. Um, so, yeah. And then for the base, uh, we'll be using, so it'll be... We're probably going to be doing like a, uh, a mud base with uh, some gray rock. So um, we'll be using the Bella Brown uh, mixed with black to make like a dark ready brown and then uh, brush that up with the Bella and probably the Yashopti bone. And then for the gray rocks, um, we've got some neutrals um, over here. Uh, we'll probably use some of this uh, Necromancer Cloak, which is like a dark grey. Um, and then I should have something in the middle. Let's have a look here. Yeah, and then this uh, Dungeon Grey here, which is like a mid-tone. These are all from Army Painter. And then a Uniform Grey, which is a lighter colour. So like three stages of grey. I don't know whether we'll use them all, but they'll be there just for the base. Um, and that should pretty much do us. So let's get started. Alright, so I thought we'd just start off with uh, something easy. So we'll do the cloth. Um, and so I've got some of that gray out and a little bit of black and white here So we're just going to build up with this uh, neutral color and we can add more um, Variation colors in after that so very much the same way that we built the skin up and and even the armor just starting with one one range um, So we've got that dark tone that we put on last week and that'll be great for a base And now we want something that's a little bit lighter than this So we're probably going to go about three stages nice and easy So like each week we just come in with our brush add a little bit off, off to the side here Add a little bit of that darkness in just to dull it down a little bit so we get our first, our first shade, and uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then come in with the straight color here. So it's like an off gray, and then the straight gray, and then a little bit of the white in here. Mix that in. And again, these aren't exact measurements. We're just looking for something about about, about right. And doing this nice stepped way way of um mixing the color you can now see um, all the gradients and how you want it to to be and you can draw from those and pick from those as you like it's a really nice way to do it and using these these wet palettes you're able to do that because the paint will sit there wet for quite a while and you can be uh, working with it and you can change it up and, and mix it around but it's a really nice way to do it and lets you understand um, how these layers go down you know um, it's one thing to look at the pot and think oh, okay that's a layer and that's a base and it's this and that but um, it doesn't always make sense until you see it um, out in front of you so let's start with this darker tone here um, and we're looking at 
probably mixing a little tiny bit of water with it just to make it a bit softer and maybe a bit more black yeah that's probably about right twirl the brush and I've got a one here but you could be using any size really as long as it's got a fine point on it grab your model on the other hand and very similar to doing flesh we're going to be um, hitting the raised areas and leaving the the shadows so um, on things like cloth you're not going to get like a massive wide range of uh, variation in, in tone because uh, cloth doesn't reflect much light so um, especially this type of drab cloth it's going to be on something like a Nurgle Warrior so we don't need to go up super bright but we do want to get some definition just so when we put our glazes on we can see some 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 difference in the colors so we just start with some of these top areas and just start um, painting that in and you can do a kind of streaky method with this that always looks nice and we build up the highlights we'll probably do some um, some cross hatching some little um, jagged lines and that will help give the idea that this is um, you know some sort of rough cloth or roughly woven uh, texture and we can bring some of the lights down to the edges maybe and then when we stain them up They'll, they'll, I'll grab more of the staining of the color that we put on after the, the glazes. That could be interesting as well. It's up to you who go darker or lighter, it doesn't really matter. Um, but you're just trying to get some uh, variation ac across it, but not like super uh, light to dark, like really, really bright, like a chrome or metal surface. So we just go around and just do this across all that. Once we've done that, we'll move on to the next shade. So we'll be back in a second. Okay, so now that we've got that down and that started to build up some um, some tones, we'll move into that mid-tone there, which is basically the straight grey that we have, we've been using, this cold grey, and it's it's kind of a, a warmish grey. It's got a lot of um, there's a bit of yellow in there, I think, um, or maybe a bit of green, but it's um, it's really nice and it's working well with the, with the Nurgle Warrior. So if you find a green like that that looks like it's got a bit more colour in it, that's really good, no matter what it is. But something that's off neutral, so either warm or cool, that's going to be a lot more interesting on the model than um, than a straight neutral for, for this type of stuff. So now we're going to come in and we'll do the same thing again. We're not going to do the cross hatching just yet. We're just going to build up the tones a little more just to get a bit more variety. But you can start doing that streaky pattern if you if you want straight down just to simulate some of the other ways in which we've been uh, detailing the model on other areas like the um, like the armor there. You know, these sort of patterns that are reoccurring across the model um, is always a pleasing thing to do. So you try to, um, you know, have more than one place that either a texture, a, um, a paint, a painting style like your brush marks or, um, or colors exist. You want them to, to appear on ver various areas across the model. Um, this That's sort of a theory I guess an art theory based in, um, you know, in uh, fine art when you're doing um, paintings and so on. You don't want to have just like something that's only in one place and you don't see it anywhere else unless it's the focal point of, of the image. But even then they try to put um, something of that uh, somewhere else on, on the image so that it's not, so it doesn't sort of stick out like a sore thumb and um, so everything sort of blends together. So that's kind of what we're going for here. So I'm going to go through and do that and just build it up again. It's basically going over the same areas, just leaving a little more of, the, of that shadow um, so we end up with something that's, you know, tonally interesting. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so now I've uh, dropped down to a smaller brush, which is a bit like a zero or something like that, and we're going for this slightly lighter color that's basically a bit of the white mixed in. So we're going to get some of this, a little tiny bit of water, you know, just roll your brush, get it ready. And now we're going to start to maybe put a bit of texture in this. So now we're going to go across the model a little bit and we're going to, we're going to start to add in a little bit of that dotting or, or cross hatching. So, and, and, and some streaks as well. So we're going to vary it up a little bit. So we'll start with some little fine highlights and we'll start out with just a little bit on the edge here, maybe. Okay. And then maybe come across here with a few little dots and cross hatching and whoop, it's out of focus. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to see that. So yeah, I'll we'll start again. We'll just um, come in here with a few of these little dots. Start to get a little bit of that texture. Okay, and it's just basically very subtle little bits of texture there. You can cross hatch it in different ways. You can come in on a side as well. You know, this would be a very um, rough made uh, bit of clothing for this Nurgle Warrior. 
it's unlikely he would be, uh, you know, painstakingly making a perfect, perfect cloth for himself. So, or whoever's made it for him isn't going to make much of an effort to make it really cool. So it's going to have a lot of imperfections in it. So adding a little bit of that into the surface is nice. And so what you end up with is this kind of, uh, I don't know if the camera's even going to pick that up, but you're going to start to see a bit of a roughness going on. So I'm going to go through and just do these nice little jagged and, and fine lines across the tops, just all the raised areas on the cloth. And we'll come back and take a look and do one more final highlight just to pick off some areas. All right, we'll be back soon. All right, let's take a look. So yeah, you can just start to see that. It's probably reading more as um, just a flat highlight, but there is actually this very fine um, texture running across it and running in this kind of angled direction this way and that way. And so you're getting like um, like that kind of direction. And so you're getting a, a nice little uh, bit of texture coming on on that cloth, but you gotta be careful. You gotta only use like the very, very uh, tip of your brush. Does, light little caresses back and forth like this, little jittering motions, and you'll see the paint uh, draw off the end and you can get that nice little bit of uh, texture. So now we're going to use that last highlight, which is a bit more of the white mixed in, and we're going to add a bit of that. And then finally, we'll um, come back in with some washes and we'll liven this up a little bit and give it that um, that lift. But we'll do that at the end once we've done the, the skulls and everything else, and we'll come back in and just do a wash at the end. So now we're looking for that, um, uh, for those, uh, just extra little spots where we can uh, jump that highlight a little bit more. So we will. So you got to be careful. Got to keep that. That paint nice. There we go. All right. So now we're just going to pick out some spots. So we've got like a few areas here where we could do. So maybe just a little bit down this top spot here. So now this is sort of more of a dotting motion with a little jitter. So it's very fine. We're just allowing some of that to come out just to further increase. Because remember when we were doing the flesh, we just wanted to go up a little bit higher than what um, we otherwise would because the glazing tends to wash things down and like bring the tonal range back to the middle. And you don't really want that. You want to have a little bit more um, dark to light so that it, it, all, it all stands out, especially when you're looking at it from, you know, far away on the tabletop. You don't want it to be um, just so mid-toned, everything mid-tone. You want to have some bright uh, colors coming forward. So we just keep playing with this and just building up the lights. You can see how I'm sort of concentrating more on the top um, and then rather than the bottom. And so what you end up with is this sort of just slightly brighter. You can see there on that side how it's just a little brighter than that side. And that's what we want. Okay, I'll be back when it's all done. All right, so now we're on to the straps. So the straps are really easy, very similar to the way we did the timber. We've got that dark brown there and we're just going to build up a little bit of a lighter tone uh, on the edges here very simply and we're going to do a similar thing to it that we did with this um, cloth here we're going to do um, little dotting motions or little like uneven little spots of light across there um, to simulate you know the cracked leather and on a leather strap like this it's going to be running up and down not this way so you're going to go up and down because that's the the way the the um the curve as as, it, as the the strap bends across the body it the the leather itself is going to crack um, along that, so in, in that direction. So we're going to do a little bit of that on both of those straps um, and even onto these little straps here that we've got um, on the skulls and that should give us a pretty good result. So um, the color we put on before was a little darker than the, the Doom Ball, so we can probably just use a little bit of this Doom Ball here to start with. That'll probably work out just fine. So get a little bit on the palette here little tiny bit of water, and I'm still using that fine detail brush we were using before. Just because this area is quite small, we want to have a nice fine point. So uh, we start off here. Now can we see? Yep, should be all good. Uh, we're just going to run just a little bit of this across the top there, a little bit across the bottom. It's very fine little jittering motions. It's a bit hard to see with my camera, but 
basically you're getting a sort of dotted line ac across one side of the uh, strap and the other. And so I'm going to go through and do all that and uh, then we'll come back and then when you're doing on, on these type of things, uh, don't worry too much about doing that. Just run it across the top, you know, like this to get a bit of a highlight in the center because you're not going to be able to get that. With a final highlight we can do a bit of dotting just to break it up but you'll just do it like that on these type of smaller areas. But on this type of strap this is a really good one because it's in a really um, prominent position so we want to spend a bit more attention on that one because it's it's in the focal area. So oh yeah, I'll be back in a second once I've done that. Alright, so now we just move a little bit of this um, uh, lighter brown into the, the doom ball. We're going to get like a mid-tone and we'll use that as our highlight. So we shouldn't need any more than this. It's only a very small area, so it should be fine. But we just uh, run that across the top to start with, like a little line highlight just to establish it. And then we can break it up with a few dots and some streaks. And we'll just... Just until we start to see a little bit of interest there. You're going to have to use a very fine brush for this to get this to work on such a small area, but you can start to see that there. I don't know if that was in focus when I was doing that, but you can sort of see it there. There's that sort of streaky pattern. So um, coming across the front here, and we'll go again. So just hitting the top there, just in sort of an uneven way. And then just coming down with little tiny streaks hitting the bottom and these sort of they sort of meet in the middle just adding a few areas where it's a bit stronger and then not in other areas you should end up with something pretty interesting there we go and there we go and yeah, I think that's about as, as much as we need. I don't think we need to go any higher. Just on these um, other straps, we might just put a little tiny bit of a highlight across the top there just to give them a little bit of something. Just so that they're not one color or two colors. Just add a little bit of brightness there. Just like that. Okay, and then you've got your, your, your bit of brights there and that'll, that'll come up nice and it'll have more color in there once we put a little bit of that glazing on. But that's, um, that's all the straps done. So now we're onto the final stage of the bone. So the bone is um, not gonna be too difficult. We're only, again, using probably the same number of uh, layers as we did with the gray. Um, and that should be pretty good. And so I'll set that up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so let's take a look. So we're going to begin by putting in the first uh, layer. So like I've done before, we just grab our uh, dark brown here, bring it across, grab some of this bone and mix it in. And what we're trying to go for is a, uh, a color that's a little bit darker than the, than the bone tone. So we just bring that in and something around about this, this region is where we want. So um, I guess it's like a quarter of this brown to, to the bone, something like that. So but, you know, like I said before, these aren't exact measurements. You're building a gradient and then working from that. So if we come across here, we'll get this, this straight bleach bone. I mean, sorry, the Oshapti bone. Uh, bleach bone is the old color. You can tell how old I am saying the word bleach bone. Anyone that knows what that is. Um, and then we come across with the white here. Bring that in to create the bright tone. And then finally, our little highlight right at the end for those bright areas. So you can see the gradient there where we're gonna go from. Um, a little bit easier with this color, it comes up on the camera a bit nicer. Uh, so let's begin. We've got this darker tone here. It's been mixed with a bit of water and we'll start on these skulls here. So the skull is really easy. You can see the um, the way the, the ridges are, so the across the top of the cranium here, you've got this ridge line that comes down the, the side of the temple there, and then um, you've got the, the brow line above the eye, the eye socket here, and so you just hit that, it might actually be a little darker actually, i just start that a little darker, okay, and then um, just hit that across there, and for something so small, we might drop down to a smaller brush, so this is that zero again. If you've got larger areas on your model, then use a bigger brush. 
but we're just going to run that down that line to establish it and then on the the flat part here at the top we're just going to leave a little tiny bit of shadow this dark tone just next to where that that temple line is on the side of the skull I don't know what that's called but that, that's like a little ridge the always see in skulls so we just want to leave a little bit of that and then a bit of shadow coming down below the um, uh, the the forehead there before it hits the top of the eyes and that's going to give you that shadow and then in this temple it's going to be darker and then it's going to go to a little bit lighter behind so we're going to leave a little bit of that um, you know the the shadow there in that recess just behind the eye socket and then just build it up little tiny strokes unfortunately this is a really bad spot to show this but I'll show it to you at the end there once I've got that in but you'll see I don't know if you can see that so there's like a little shadow there in, in behind in where the where the temple would be um, behind the eye socket and um, you just progressively building lighter colors onto the edges and same for all around here you're just adding um, onto the top area here across the cheekbone okay and um, across the nose and for something like this that's um, you know on a Nurgle warrior it's probably been sitting there for a long time we don't have to go up to like a really bright bone color for this it's probably going to have been sitting in you know filth and water and muck uh, a lot of the time so it's probably going to be quite stained and quite uh, quite dark naturally so you know you're not going to have to go up too light so I'm going to go and do that on the skulls now if we're coming across to um, I'll just show you on the on these so on the bone we just want to follow the the ridge lines on on these and what I mean by that is at the base you've got these little indentations and so what you do is you run your your brush up that and it comes together at the top okay so that's all like that and then we run the point on those ridges and we create these little uh, sort of lines of, of shadow running up so that's kind of like uh, simulating the um, impressions in the horns if you look at our uh, horns in nature they always have these little impressions especially even flat horns like this they're going to have little indentations as they get closer to the to the um, to where they where they grow out of on, on, on the skull in this case uh, on the shoulder so um, same for this flat one here when we're doing that we're going to be uh, running the brush across the top areas and you're going to feather it out like this with these little points okay so uh, can you see that there's those little tiny areas these little lines of shadow and we're going to do that around the base here and all this at least at this stage is going to end up being one color for now and then we'll build we'll extend these lines further out until we get to the highlight so i'll be back in a sec once i've done that one okay so i've got the first um layer on and we're starting to see those shadows so you can see they're on the bones there we've got those little dark lines at the base Okay, you've got the little shadows behind the temple and in the eye sockets, just below the um, the front of the head there on the skull, the um, above the brow, a little bit of shadow there. And now we're just basically going to go through and build up. So we're going to come to this um, sort of more or less bleach bone color. Oh, sorry, keep saying it, uh, a shabti bone. I don't know why they bothered to change that color, but anyway, uh, bleach bone was a good name. So um, yeah, so we get this uh, fine detail brush here and we're just going to come in and basically do the same thing but leaving a little more and so you just go around and start to build up those highlights and you put as more or less as you want especially on something like a chaos uh, model like this you can either have it really bright or dark depending on how, how you feel about it um, so you can see there on the highlight so same thing for here we're going to run it up and hit those top areas and build up that color so we get some bone so i'm going to go through and do that now and i'll be back in a second all right so let's take a look so now we're starting to see it okay skulls coming together the horns are starting to look like horns got those shadows and now we're going to put these first layers of like I guess true highlight on this so a little bit of that white in there we're doing that tone that's just a little bit lighter than the Ashapti so that's the first highlight and we want to um, just hit the very top areas where the lights gonna go so on the skull it would just be here on this section 
on this skull it would just be on, on this section, just the very raised areas. So we're getting like across here. So this sort of uh, skull is quite a, um, I guess a, um, you know, a skull that's that's seen a lot of wear and tear. So we're not we're not building it to um, a really crazy bright bone color. We're just going to be doing it to that kind of level. So then when we're coming over to these, um, we're gonna go uh, up the horn a little bit. If that's in focus and um, we're just going to hit run your your highlight and just hit that across the top first just to establish the, the light okay so we run it around I'll just show you on this side so you can see so we start with that so you've established it and then we're just going to gently um, bring it down into the other color but not um, all the way down so you're just going to run like a fine line just with the tip of your brush and just run it in and gently feather that out and bring it down and this is where it can start to break up a bit just a little bit like how you've done on the on the skin or on the on the cloth and just and just feather that in so you get that nice bright there and that's going to be um, you know, giving you some really nice bone. And then we might just do one little final touch with the light, possibly on the tops of these. But I'd say for the skulls, we won't need to do that. But for the tops of these, we might put one final highlight on. So I'll go and do that now. And we'll, then we'll come back for that final highlight. All right, let's take a look. So there we have it. And now we just want a little bit, the skulls are fine. They're pretty good. You wouldn't go up any brighter than that. I think that's nice. Um, but the, the tips of these horns could do with a little tiny touch of uh, brighter tone. So we'll just mix in a little bit of this to create like a, a sort of light cream white color. And just with a little bit of water mixed in. And we're just going to hit the very tips. So it's just hitting this end here. Getting a little bit of light there. just on the, on the end, just like that. So we'll come across here and put a few little streaks, just for find an edge, you know, and just run the streak down it, just to give it a little bit more. So these do have, you know, an edge on them. So you can just see that, just a little bit of light there. So I'm gonna go through, do that. I'm gonna set up for the, um, the washers and then we're gonna do the washers and then the base and we're good to go. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, and now for this last final step. So as we can see, he's basically done now. Um, you know, if you were just doing batch painting and stuff, this would be fine, but we're just, we're pushing this all the way to the end. So I'm taking you all the way through all these various steps, um, just to really see how these things can be done if you really want to push yourself. Um, so now we just want a little bit of that color coming across under the cloth and a little bit onto the bone, not too much, but just a little bit. So I've got the glazing colors out and like before, we're just going to add a lot of water to it. And I think we're just going to start with probably, um, we'll do the cloth and we'll start with a little bit of this blue, I think. So we'll just bring some of this across, a lot of water mixed in. So it's like almost like dirty water. Okay. And then we're just going to add a small amount of it in. Um, and just see how we go. So probably just more towards the, the base here where it's touching the skin. So we get a deeper shadow running across here. So it's, it's not so um, all the same color. So we just run a little bit of that in there just to help um, deepen that. And then we can sort of bring some of that down into some of these shadows and just add a little bit of blue across here, just dabbing it in you know, even on the tops a little bit, just to change the color. It doesn't have to necessarily be everywhere, but we're just adding a little bit of that in just to um, just break it up and give the, the shadows a little bit more variation in the color that they're showing. Okay, and so we come across to the front under here and run that underneath so we get an even deeper shadow where that belly's sagging over which we definitely want. Okay, and then once we've got a little bit of that kind of shadow happening, 
then uh, we might come across to some of this purple. I think purple is going to be a really good color here. And we just come in and even white, while it's still a little wet, we don't really have to worry too much. We just add a little bit of this purple in and that's just going to help just in other areas. So not necessarily, so maybe leave the, the blue there and have it sort of blend out to a purple towards the bottom, you know, just to give you a gradient. So it changes color. I don't know if you can really see that on this, but there is this subtle um, purple shift going on at the moment between this light and dark down here. Um, and because we lit this a bit more, this darker purple as it's hitting it is now bringing it back to the right color. So we're sort of, we're tricking it a bit. And so that's when I talk about like going a little bit brighter than you normally would go um, when you're doing something like this. So you have some tones to work with and you can hit it a couple of times to, to increase saturation and, and bring it to something that's um, more more in the middle and you're going to get those that that tonal thing happening so we just bring a bit more under here so we see a little bit of this um, this purple and that's pretty good and now we might come across and um, add maybe um, a little bit of this blue into some of these um, these bone areas so uh, mostly in the in the in the eye sockets we'll start with we'll just add a little bit of that in um, I just remove a little bit there. Okay, let's see. And we'll just add a little bit into the shadows. So bear in mind, don't add too much of this, but just very subtle little pieces of it, little dabs, just to give a little bit of color into some of those areas, just using a fine detail brush and just softing that in very carefully, just to give some subtle differences of color so where probably, you know, you're sort of simulating, you know, where there might be a little bit of mold or, um, you know, just like when you, when you see something that's rotting, like a wood is a really good example when it's, when it's rotting in a, um, you know, in a, in a creek bed or in a, in a, some sort of water, you know, very stagnant water and you get all of the, the various things that, that as it degrades down, um, you know, you get moss growing on it, you get, you know, all kinds of different things growing in it, fungi and um, all kinds of interesting stuff growing in it. And, it, and it's, and it's a really interesting thing to look at. Um, you know, Google search it, have a, have a look at those images because that's the sort of thing that Nurgle is really referencing and based on, you know, and um, you can get some good ideas and, and good colors from that. So I'm now just dotting in some of that blue into there and then we'll come down and I'll probably add a little bit here and a bit of the purple and we'll probably leave out the magentas and the yellows you could if you wanted to but I'll probably leave those out so I'm going to go through and just do that a little bit on on all those areas we'll come back and take a look and get onto the dry brushing all right so now it's time for the base so um, we want to do some dark browns and with the gray rock so I think that'll be really cool and then I've even got out the our little glazes here because we might throw a little bit of that color on the ground just to help tie it all together since we've gone to the effort of doing it on the model we may as well put a little bit onto the base as well so um, yeah you can see there the, the glazing on the on the bone areas it's just add a bit more depth and darkness to those um, horns can't really tell too much on, on this video but it is actually like a sort of purpley blue tone uh, in all those recesses and that just looks nice with a bit of blue on those um, on those skulls, it just ties it all together. So um, yeah, first step you're gonna need is a bit of paper and you're gonna wanna have your dry brush. So, you know, a rough brush or a silicon brush or any, or a makeup brush or anything that you can use that you can wreck, okay? Not your good brush. And we're gonna start off. So the first color is going to be um, a, uh, a dark brown. So we're gonna actually get this doom ball again and we're gonna create a, um, a darker brown tone Okay, in the old days, this color was called Scorch Brown. They don't have it anymore, but that's what it actually is. So if you manage to find a color that says Scorch Brown on it, you know, on, online or something, someone's selling a, a bottle of Scorch Brown, um, what I found is the closest to get to it is this Doom Bull with black. Um, I don't know why they don't sell it anymore, but um, yeah, it's a very, very useful color. So it's this sort of slightly reddish brown, but a dark, a dark color. And it's really good for basing and stuff like that. So we're basically just gonna rub that on the, on the dry brush get your bit of paper here, rub it off so it's almost dry. Although it can be a little bit wetter than normal because it's gonna be quite a heavy dry brush. And then we're just going to run it over the surface of the, um, 
the base here, just picking off all the raised areas, but it can be a heavy one. So it can be a bit more what we call a wet brush. So um, a bit more uh, paint on it is perfectly fine uh, at this early stage. The drier dry brushes can come on later. So I'm gonna go around and do all that and we'll move on to the next color after that. Okay, and now with your brush uh, still dry and don't mix it with the water, we're gonna use the same brush. Now we get um, just the straight doom ball. Um, Oh, actually, no, we don't really need to do that. We can go straight up to the um, to this uh, Bella Brown here and just uh, rub it in. So it's going to go a bit of an off an off brown anyway, but that's actually pretty good. So we just uh, whack that on there like that, rub most off. Now this is where you do want to be a little bit drier. You don't want to be quite as wet with this one. So um, just rub a bit more off. And then we're just going to bring that straight across the top. And we're going to instantly start to get um, highlights. So it's a bit off from that one. It's like an in-between color. Um, but the Bella Brown's got too much red in it and we don't want that on the base. So that's why um, I opted for this. So it's basically just an off uh, Bella Brown, like an off yellow brown. And we just rub that across the surface until we get a nice consistency. And you can be a bit darker in these under areas here. As you see, you don't have to um, go right up to the model. You can leave a little bit of that darkness um, that actually can look really cool and, and it, it simulates a little bit of a shadow of where the model's actually standing. One thing like um, I found when um, coming back in the, in the hobby, like so many people love to do the bases separate and that is really easy then to then paint them and do it all. And, and, and if that's the way you want to do it, then um, I, you know, that's great. But what I find is, is that when you end up gluing uh, your model down afterwards, they always look like they're floating. They never look like they're grounded on the surface. And um, that's something that I've noticed. And um, it really doesn't feel like it's actually one with the, with the base. It always looks like it's not really quite there. But you can see here that that foot is firmly stuck into that ground. Little bits of gravel and stuff are up on around the foot and all that kind of thing. Like it's sunk actually in, into the ground there. And with the way I'm dry brushing it, not quite going all the way to the edge there, you're getting a soft little subtle shadow um, where he's standing. And that helps to give him um, a bit more depth and, and grounding on the base. And I find that just looks a little nicer. At least that's just, I'm very old school. So, you know, that old heavy metal thing of, you know, doing the whole model in the base and the, you know, the sand and the PVA glue. Um, I tend to go for that and, you know, I just like the look, but, you know, each to their own, I guess. So I'm going to go through and do that. And then we'll, we'll move on to the, the lighter tone. All right, and now we're just going to hit this with um, probably just another layer of this Bella Brown. So this time it should be a lot brighter. And if we rub that off, um, we should get a slightly brighter version. Uh, here we go. You can probably see that. And we'll start to get like a lighter version. You can be a little bit, um, you know, um, lighter across the surface. You don't have to hit everywhere. And bear in mind that this is probably if you're doing a chaos model, then this guy's probably standing in an area that's highly affected by chaos. So, you know, you don't have to be super naturalistic with how you um, approach it. You can sort of vary it up. And that's where the, the ink washes and stuff for the glazes will come in. We can, we can vary up the color in here and make it look a bit weird because he would be affecting the ground where, where he's standing. So once we've done that, we'll get a little bit of this bone. Again, I'm not washing the brush out. Just rub it all off. Here we go. Okay, got to be careful with this one because this can this can stuff it up. This is kind of like your final highlight and just very carefully just check it on an area that's not going to get damaged too much and just gently brush that across the top. And this is going to give us our nice brights. Just make that, um, that base pop a little bit more. And remember, like I said, when you're building up um, with glazes, which we're probably going to throw a little bit on, you want to go a touch lighter than what you think you're going to need um, because it's going to dull it down. And also the paint is going to dry a bit darker anyway. So you don't want to, um, you know, just go the color that it probably should be. You go a little bit lighter and that'll give you the better result. So yeah, we're looking pretty good now. Just make sure we hit good coverage so we see something nice. It doesn't look too patchy. You don't want it to be too patchy, but a bit of darks there is actually quite nice. Uh, subtle darkness there. So there we go. 
and we've got that shadow forming underneath him as well which is kind of cool and there's a shadow a natural shadow coming from the axe which is also helping to add a bit of um, a bit of variety across the base so now that we've got got his base basically done now we want to go through and just pick out some of these rocks and, and gray them up so that's really really simple you just grab um, your sort of medium-sized brush okay grab some of this dark gray we've got we, I'm using the necromancer cloak but you could use uh, whichever one you've got just watered down and um, we don't want it too thick because what we actually want is some of the dry brushing we've already done on this to show through so you can just pick up whatever whatever ones that you think are cool but we don't mind a little bit of that brown coming through it's actually going to be really really cool for this um, that helps so we just pick out some of these rocks just you know dotting a few around you know think about um, things come in threes you know it's also good for Nurgle um, so you do like maybe three that are close to each other maybe not quite next bit close and then maybe do another one somewhere else like uneven amounts around the base and that will help um, pick it out so I'm gonna go and do that now we'll come back with the final dry brush and the glazing all right and now for the final highlights so we're just going to get um, some of this lighter gray here I think we'll probably just go straight to this light color I don't think we need um, another tone here so we'll just get this lighter tone and um, rub it off just something that's lighter than the dark color and we're just going to gently brush that across the tops just like we did um, on the brown and it's totally okay um, if it rubs off onto other areas that's totally fine we're not worried about that um, a bit of gray on those areas is nice too so we just come across here Oop got to keep it in focus for you and just hitting those top areas making those those uh, rocks a little bit grayer a little bit lighter just helps pick them out a bit and uh, yeah there we go so that's the base done and now we just want to throw maybe a few little tones of um, glazes in there so we'll grab our normal brush again uh, maybe we'll get a slightly thicker one now and we'll use a little bit of, of this uh, maybe a little bit of the blue mixed with the white the water again so we just get a little bit of that glaze just like that okay and we'll just start you know just very gently dotting a little bit of that around maybe up onto the rocks here and up into here maybe just around those rocks and those areas and add a little bit of color in there definitely around where he's standing so just dotting a little bit of those blues not too much just a little bit just come across here a little bit of blue in there dotting it around and then we'll vary it up with a little bit of um, the purples mixed with a bit of the water and we'll just dot a little bit of purple in there and just mucking around getting those colors to show up it's only a very subtle thing but um, you know we've gone to the extent of getting that all that done you know on the model we may as well add a little bit of those colors in uh, maybe a little bit of the red even throw a bit of that in there with a bit of water throw a bit of red in there and the red will mix well with the brown so you'll get a little bit uh, deeper color you know just maybe a bit heavier blue in there More blue in there. There we go. It'll also go and maybe a little bit of this yellow. Let's get a little bit of that yellow in there. And we'll just pop a little bit of that maybe on the rocks just to make them go like an off color. Yellow is good for this type of thing. It's going to give it that sickly look to it especially around where he's standing 
Now if you find that at the end if um, the colors dull down a bit too much you can always come back in with a final dry brush with that um, bone again just a very light subtle one across the top and that'll just help pick it out um, if you find that it does dull down a bit too much once this dries. You won't know that till the end, but that's a, an aesthetic thing. If, if you like where it's at, then that's great. I mean, as I said, um, you know, um, a darker base is always good if you want to highlight something that's bright like this skin, that'll actually contrast it well. So you don't necessarily have to, um, have to do that. But um, there we go. I'll see if I can get that in focus. So it is very dark, but there is just this subtle difference of colors in there. Some There's a little hint of purple and red and a bit of yellow on those rocks. And that just helps tie it together with this. You could also add some flock as well. Um, but um, yeah, that's him. That's done. So next week we'll be looking at um, the final touches on the skin and uh, the little tarnishes and dribbles. And that'll be the, the end of this little tutorial. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please hit that subscribe button and the notify button and all that stuff if you've, if you've liked it. Um, and I hope to see you uh, for the next one. At the end there'll be an overview with the, uh, the colors and a close-up of this model. Uh, but otherwise, have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.